Russia accused Ukraine of trying to assassinate President Vladimir Putin in a drone attack. Multiple videos were posted online appearing to show an explosion and smoke at the Kremlin. Russia provided no evidence beyond the videos, but says it reserves the right to retaliate. Ukraine has denied any involvement, and President Zelensky insisted Ukraine does not attack Moscow or Putin. Joining me now to discuss is Michael McFaul, former U.S. ambassador to Russia and MSNBC international affairs analyst. His book is titled From Cold War to Hot Peace, an American ambassador in Putin's Russia. Okay, Mr. Ambassador, look, the New York Times points out that Russia was quick to publicize this, unlike past attacks on Russian territory. What exactly do we know right now? Well, I don't know. And to the best of my knowledge, the Biden administration still doesn't know who conducted this operation. Uh, they don't know if it's the Ukrainians. They don't know if it's a group inside of Russia or if it's a false flag operation that the Russians themselves did so that they could then claim they need to retaliate. I don't think we know who did it. I think we do know that it was not an assassination attempt for two reasons. One, you're looking at it. You're, we're watching the video right now, right? That drone is not capable of exploding the building it's attacking. And number two, Putin doesn't live there. Uh, this attack took place at, you know, 2 or 3 a.m. in the morning. He's out at his residence. It's outside of town. I've been there a few times. He doesn't live there. So the notion that the Russians are claiming that this was an assassination attempt, that we know is not true. Today, Secretary of State Antony Blinken spoke with The Washington Post, David Ignatius, about this claim from the Kremlin. And I want you to watch this. I've seen the reports. Um, I can't uh, in any way validate them. We simply, we simply don't know. Um, second, I would take anything coming out of the Kremlin with a very large shaker of salt. We leave it to Ukraine to decide how it's going to defend itself and how it's going to try to get back the territory that's been seized from it illegally by Russia over the past 14 months and going back to 2014. So that's what American officials are saying publicly. But what do you think they're saying behind closed doors? Well, the first point that Secretary Blinken made is extremely important for everybody to remember. The Russian government lies all the time. Uh, they lie about me. They lie about Nazis ruling in Ukraine. They lie all the time. They are not constrained by the facts. And unfortunately, because of Putin's crackdown on the independent media, they're not journalists to hold them accountable and interview them like they we just saw with Secretary Blinken. Uh, in my conversations with people in the administration, they don't know what happened here. Uh, they still don't know. They most certainly weren't given a heads up by the Ukrainian government. And they're inclined to believe when President Zelensky says it wasn't his government, they're inclined to believe him over Vladimir Putin. So, Ambassador, then what can you tell us about the much anticipated Ukrainian counteroffensive uh, that we've been hearing is underway? Well, I don't think it started. Uh, you know, they keep saying it's going to happen in the spring. It's May. <laughs> you know, we are thinking it's going to happen. It hasn't. The weather there has been worse than usual. There's a lot of mud still out there. And I think that is the principal cause for delay. Number two, it sounds like they're as ready as they're going to be. Uh, U.S. Uh, Biden administration officials uh, report that they've given them everything they want, 98 percent of the material that they wanted here. Now, the Ukrainians, of course, always want more weapons. They want F-16s. They want the long-range missiles, this attack them system. But for this offensive, for this counteroffensive, it sounds like they have what they need. And I suspect we'll be learning a lot more about it in the coming weeks. Uh, Mr. Ambassador, today is actually World Press Freedom Day. And uh, when I think about this, I think about Evan Gershkovich and the President Biden. He actually put out a statement. And in that statement, he said that journalist Evan Gershkovich and Austin Tice weigh heavy on his mind. Secretary Blinken says the U.S. is intensely involved in efforts to get Ker Gershkovich back. Are you optimistic about those efforts? Well, first, I'm shocked by them. Uh, I, I sometimes think I can't be more shocked by what Mr. Putin will do, especially with his barbaric war where he's just slaughtering civilians, including today in Ukraine. And yet the arrest of Evan Gershkovich was shocking to me. Uh, I did not anticipate this. Uh, this is outrageous. 
Uh, and I'm not optimistic that'll be easy to get him out. And it wasn't just that they needed another American to pick up. They have other Americans already arrested, as we know. Mark Fogel, Paul Whelan. If they're just looking to do a trade, that's one thing. But it wasn't just that. He wants to scare away Western journalists, uh, independent journalists, from working in Russia. Evan was doing his job. He is a really fantastic reporter who I've been reading for years. That's what scares Putin, and that's why he arrested him. Michael McFall, thank you.